Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're gonna learn how to create that sort of projectile in case you need it for something. I'm gonna use this for a Patreon tutorial for the Arcane projectile. Also, I'm just using this transform here to scale it on the x-axis. However, I'm gonna export it like this and if I need some additional scaling, I can just change it in the uh, game engine. So let me go back to 1.5 and now if I scroll up here, I can change it to sphere and it will be a little bit more rounded. I'm going to give Houdini to do its calculation and go through the whole graph as you can see here and this is what we have. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go out from this uh, geometry node I'm going to create a new one and let's start creating this arcane uh, projectile. So I'm going to rename this into Arcane Projectile YouTube, dive inside and I'm going to start with a uh, box. I'm going to enable the grid for now, I'm going to rotate it by 45 here, oops let me zoom in. Also I'm going to add transform in case I want to scale it up just a bit like this. Okay, next I'm going to use uh, copy to points and I'm going to build my point network here. So I'm going to start with the sphere. Mm, whoops. Definitely not this node. Okay, uh, sphere. I'm going to change this to ISO offset to get a volume like this. But I'm going to increase the resolution of it maybe to 30. Next, I'm going to use scatter to get the points and I'm going to change the value of it maybe to 20. So I'm going to use this just to see how it looks. And as you can see, we are getting some sort of shape. I'm going to go to sphere, maybe increase it to one. So it's slightly longer. And in here, I'm just going to add attribute uh, randomize and I'm going to use uh, rote first for the rotation. This is the four dimensional value. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to zero all the values I've got here. Now I'm just going to put one here and then with my middle mouse I'm going to start rotating just to check which I want, uh, which direction I want this to be random. So I think I wanted that one so I'm going to put one here and minus one here as well. So I'm getting this and I'm gonna get this attribute randomize, copy paste it in between and in here I'm just gonna use P scale to get a random uh, scale. Uh, this is just a one dimensional so we can change only uh, the first value and I'm gonna maybe put 0.5 so our values and our scale starts from 0.5 and it goes up to one. Okay, so now once I got this I can apply maybe uh, axis align to move this up a bit like this so it sits on the grid as you can see here I'm gonna add a linear taper next as you can see I'm scaling this down but it scales in the wrong direction so you can go here where you've got capture direction and change it to be on the Y axis and obviously the length of it is what you can see here, those numbers on the grid, one, two, three. So I think this might be maybe four. So I'm gonna put the capture length up to four. And now I can just scale it down and I'm gonna scale it to 0.1. Next, I'm just gonna lower this a bit. So I'm gonna get a transform and just manually I'm gonna lower it to be just below the grid. I'm 
Next, I'm gonna use poly bevel so I can get slightly softer edges like this. And I'm gonna apply some edge damage as well with one of the lab tools. A default setting should be okay, but I like to just change the height of it maybe to 0.5 to get slightly less uh, damage on the edges. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. And next, I just wanna get rid of the bottom part of it and make it uh, just a little bit better in terms of visuals and, and for this to look as a projector. So I'm gonna use Boolean. Okay, our graph is start getting a bit messy, so I'm just gonna tidy up a bit. Okay, so we've got Boolean and now we need to shape uh, for the boolean so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy my setup i've got here with copy two points i'm gonna paste it next to it and i'm gonna change a box to sphere with the default values i'm just gonna plug it into the boolean just to see what i've got and obviously it just takes way too much so i'm gonna go back to our sphere here which we modify the settings of and we're gonna change it to 0.5 as it was. So I think it's still a little bit too much. So I'm gonna to go to our transform here and maybe change default value. Uh, this to be one. I'm gonna preview it. And we're still getting a little bit too much of the of the boolean. So we can go to the sphere or go to maybe scatter, change the global seed. But still feels quite random. So I'm going to go to a sphere here and maybe change those values for the X and Z axis to be set to one. I'm going to preview it. Okay, go to Boolean now. And maybe where we have this uh, sphere, we can just increase the uniform scale slightly to 1.5. But now we have to go to scatter probably and increase the number of those spheres as well. I'm gonna disable our rotation and the P scale attribute as well. So I quite like this cat. I think mean, it's not too bad. However, there's a lot of uh, leftovers here. So what I can do, I can just go here maybe and increase uh, the value of that sphere as well. Okay, so that could work, but I think we just eat it a little bit too much of our projectile. So the last bit, I'm just gonna go for transform before I plug it into the Boolean. And in here, I'm just gonna lower this to maybe minus 0.5. And we can keep lowering uh, for the better look if you want it. So I'm just gonna go with this. I quite like this cat. Uh, so next, I'm just gonna go for VDB from polygons. I'm gonna increase the resolution of it to maybe 0.005. And next, I'm going to use Smooth SDF to get those nice edges here, especially here. Right, I'm going to turn that into a polygon, so that will be converted VDB to polygons. You can play with this adaptivity settings, so I'm just going to maybe put it 0.1. And what it does, if you go to your uh, wire shading you can see just erases uh, some of the uh, polygons so maybe let's go for 0 0.05 and i'm gonna do remesh anyway afterwards and for the remesh i'm just gonna try a different setting so i'm gonna put 0.1 and i'm gonna be keep scaling this down till i get um the details I had uh, previously. Okay, so obviously that's way too much. So next might be a good idea to use poly reduce. And in here, 
I'm just gonna put maybe output polygon count and you can get the exact number of the polygons you actually want to have as an output so I'm gonna go to info to see that's a little bit too much 9000 so maybe go with um, 1.5k and I think that would be that could be enough maybe slightly higher maybe up to two oops 2000 Next, I'm just gonna add some normals to it. I'm gonna preview it with the uh, smooth shaded. So as you can see, our edge damage doesn't come through. Although we get slight distortion maybe here. So you might either uh, change, the, change the setting for the edge damage to be slightly a bit more visible or deeper. I'm just gonna go I want to go with this but I'm just gonna change the settings for my uh, normals slightly so I think maybe 60 might be good enough okay if you're getting any issues around the edges like the holes you can use polyfill to fix it otherwise I'm just gonna go with this projectile And how it looks I just need some UVs now okay so I'm just gonna disable the grid and for the UVs I'm gonna use auto uh, UVs I'm gonna preview it you can go to uh, set view UV viewport and you can change the settings here if you want to obviously I don't need those UVs to be perfect so I'm just gonna go with those I'm gonna go to perspective view and next I would like to have some orthographic UVs as well so I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, go for UV project I'm gonna change the UV channel to 2 and now if I'm gonna preview my UVs Uh, this is what we're getting so i'm gonna go to initialize like this and ideally i would uh, i would like this to be rotated so i'm gonna rotate it here perfect initialize again rotation and you can do uv layout as well so UV layout for the UV2 and now you're having the left and right uh, values you can apply to the texture using the uh, vertex color so let me show you we get a little bit stretch here and here but I don't think it will be that much important if it is then obviously you can come back here and just tweak your UVs I'm just gonna go with those Next, I'm going to apply some gradient color. I'm going to invert that and just slightly modify it so I get the black values of the vertex color just at the top. Right, so why I'm doing this? If I'm, if I'm going to get transform now, oops. And if I'm going to just rotate it and 90, because I want this to be pointing um, into the X direction. Perfect. Next, axis align. And I want this to sit uh, on the center like this. And that should be ready for export. So, okay, so now what are we doing? As you can see here, in case we want to have some glow at the beginning in the game engine, we can always export this with the vertex colors and multiply it uh, with vertex color. That why, uh, that's how we're going to get the glow. Otherwise, we can just use our UV channel 2 that we created here and apply a gradient in the game engine as well or as a texture if you want to dedicate it a glow 
um, for example, only here or maybe only at the back. So there are two ways how you could um, do that. However, if you don't need it, then I'll just get rid of a second UV channel and the vertex colors as well. And the last bit before we actually gonna export this, I'm gonna get transform. And under transform, I'm gonna set scale to 50 because that will be the game engine scale to make sure it's not too small in the engine. And I'll just export that. Once you export it, and if you'll be having issues with the UVs, you can also come back here and modify your UVs, maybe create more islands. And I'm gonna export with that scale because in the game engine, I can just go maybe and increase the scale on the x-axis like this in the particle system if I want this to be slightly longer. Okay, the cool bit now is that you created all this graph. You can go, for example, here where you've got the box and you can create a sphere instead. Use this and Houdini is going to go through hold this graph and create a slightly smoother version of it as you can see here. It's a little bit difficult to see mainly because we applied some UVs already. But if you go back to normals, zooming in, you can see you can get some really cool smooth shapes if we wanted to. I personally prefer the, the box. I haven't tried any other shapes, but you feel free to try if you wanted to. Okay, so that's it for the projectile. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was like a really cool exercise for you to dive into Houdini and maybe you managed to learn some of the notes that you haven't uh, used before. All right, thank you so much.